All right, so overall, I think it's good, but there are some things that are a little bit iffy. What's going on, you guys? This is your boy, San Yanatan, back again with another video. Today, we're talking about Avatar The Last Airbender, the Netflix series, the adaptation on Netflix. And we're going to talk about some of the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, I'm going to be mixing it around in the video, so I may talk about the good, I may talk about the bad. But we'll start off with the good, and we'll you know, get to the bad later. I just want to let y'all know that I'm a super huge fan of the original animated series of Avatar The Last Airbender. But I'm really trying to have a non-biased take on this, but it's really hard to do that because, of course, like I said, I'm a fan of the first series. And this is my second time recording this video because the audio was not connected the last time. But you guys, I have a tattoo with the Avatar The Last Airbender. I really like certain series and I have tattoos of certain series I like. I'm not saying that tattoo automatically means the series is good or meaningful, but you can see how much of an impact it has had on me. The good parts that I like about it is the production. The production looks really good. Like it looks really good. The settings, uh, opera looks good, the costumes, except sometimes I'll even say the costumes might be a bad thing because they look too clean. Like they almost look like cosplay. It doesn't look like Aang has been training in this uh, monk uniform or Katara and Sokka have been, you know saying they live inside the ice. They're fighting uh, tiger seals and all this different stuff, fish and there's water. You would think it would be looking a little bit more dirty. You know, that's just a little nitpick. But besides that, it looks great. The music was great. Like all the different types of music was really hitting. It sounded like Orca, orca. <laughs> it sounded like an orchestra was playing it, right? Something else that I thought was cool was the bending. Well, some of the bending. Fire bending was really cool. Like every time they threw a punch or a kick or Zuko was doing a move, it looked like it was very fluid. Air bending too, because I guess it's invisible, so it's a little bit easier to add the little effect on it, because all you're doing is the martial art and then you just add the effect on it. Water bending and earth bending, those are a little bit more shaky. Water bending, it looked kind of like the M. Night Shyamalan movie. It looked like kind of like a fake effect. Like it looked like the water was glitching or something it didn't look exactly natural which i understand it's hard to do water bending maybe that's why ang never water bent but we're gonna get into that later earth bending too it looked kind of just like like it just didn't look as natural as the fire bending the fire bending looked the best i think okay so to go along with the fire bending some of the cool things about the fire bending was it showed you how powerful fire bending is and how powerful this bending is getting hit by a rock is very dangerous getting hit by a fireball is very dangerous you can die like they show people getting burnt alive and getting scorched and it shows you just how powerful and what the stakes are for the fire nation uh taking over you know doing their thing another aspect i liked with that with the fire and them showing the fire was the fire lord they showed a little bit more the fire lord and they showed him actually showing what he's like in the fire nation showing what he's like around his people even the people who want to rise up against him showing him when, what he's ar like around zuko and azula how he's kind of like pitting them against each other feel like they have to compete to be first like zuko is obviously first in line so azula she's just really wants to feel superior so she's trying to like be uh, equal to Azuko, but always superior because stuff just comes easy to her and Zuko has a kind heart with a kind heart I like the part with Zuko and Iroh I like a lot of the scenes with Zuko's and Iroh um just interacting when Iroh found out about Lu Ten and they were all at the memorial Zuko gave Iroh that memento that was really sweet I liked all the sweet leaves on the vine songs all the different aspects with Zuko and Iroh that was actually pretty dope now i'll say that Iroh i think was probably one of the best actors then Zuko was pretty close there and Sokka and and Katara they were like not as good but Sokka's probably the best after that but i don't know some of the acting was hit or miss here some of the, i mean the acting was a hit or miss i think it was just the dialogue too the way that the dialogue was written it felt very like uh, 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 the, like we have to go here because this is, is this, this is this. It's very like explaining like what's happening on the show instead of just like letting stuff happen naturally. Aang sees a vision of going to the water uh, bender. He's like, I need to go to the Northern Water Tribe versus in the show, they were going to go to the Northern Water Tribe anyways because Aang needs to water bend. Basically, I like some of the additions to the show. Like, I don't like the changes necessarily so much, but some of the additions that they added were actually really nice. For instance, the 41st Division. So in the show, the animated series, Zuko speaks out of turn in his father's war room, and this is how he got his scar. But in the show, I was always wondering how he got his crew and stuff. This series actually answers that. It shows you that Zuko was spoke out of turn, just like in the show. The 41st division that his father was about to sacrifice in war, that ended up being Zuko's crew. 
To me, this actually was very touching and it showed like how much Zuko actually cared for his crew and what he was willing to sacrifice to, for his people, for his kingdom. Because, you know, Zuko is thinking about his whole fire nation. He doesn't want to sacrifice anybody. He doesn't think it's right. And this just shows you how Zuko is. And it was touching to see them realize that. And they actually claim Zuko as their prince. Because before then, they weren't really rocking with Zuko like that. Yeah, that was a really nice addition. Okay, so we talked about some of the stuff that I like so far. I may touch back on it, but now we're going to talk about some of the stuff that I didn't like as much. The airbending genocide, that was really cool to see, but I think like the way that they structured the story, the way that they changed certain stories around, it kind of messed up the impact that the story had, you know, uh, to the build up. There was a story in the original series, the episode was called The Storm, and they were showing Zuko his story of how he got a scar and it showed Aang's story about how he ran away and how you know the whole 100 year war started and Aang froze himself that is the beginning of the Netflix adaptation or oh, the Aang's side of it anyways Aang was told that he was going to be the avatar he didn't even run away this is something that's actually a key detail Aang did not run away Aang just needed to get some air he literally was like ah, I just need to go fly so Aang just flew around for a little about a little while he didn't run away he just needed to get some air and then there was a storm Aang got caught up in a storm and he sailed himself off that was a change that I was like all right nah and then just seeing it in the beginning it doesn't allow us to have the mystery of how did this happen to the airbenders like what's going on just the way Sokka and Katara came on to Aang now they switched to sexism all right like we I had made a video talking about uh so they're taking out Sokka being sexist as much i feel like that deprived him of having that um character development but yeah Sokka was just just kind of like an older brother just like trying to be like you, you need to just stop waterbending because it's dangerous you know because people get killed for waterbending and because i was like i need a waterbend they end up having a little canoe current thing and then they end up getting to the iceberg they don't even argue and it's just katara trying to bring the boat back to them and that's what opens up the iceberg so that's the change with that it seemed like they kind of switched the sexism or like the the way people were interacting with each other it was suki that was just all over Sokka. like Sokka wasn't really over suki but what i'm saying is that they, they took out Sokka's sexism but they added suki being like super overly like horny for Sokka. like Sokka was in his room or like at the kiyoshi warrior place he was washing his face he had his hair back and suki came in she was like hey the food's ready and Sokka's just like with his shirt off and Suki's just staring at him for like a good 10 to 15 seconds she's just like and I'm just like bro like okay we get it all right Suki like move and then I don't know she's trying to show Sokka some um moves and she pretty much beats his ass <laughs> and then Sokka's like whoa girl like what's wrong with you Suki was just like really liking Sokka like a lot like right off the bat like yeah we knew that Suki's a girl too just in the show but yeah she was like really really coming on to Sokka a lot. I mean, that was okay, but it was just like, okay, that's, that, that they can't have Sokka be sexist, but they allow uh, Suki to be like super lustful over Sokka. Same thing with June. With June and Uncle Iroh, June was like, oh, I'll do this for you because your uncle is just so cute. Like, you know what I'm saying? She kept on saying that at least twice, like that Uncle Iroh is so cute. Because in the show, Uncle Iroh was a little bit of a creep with June. He like laid on her and pretended that he was paralyzed by her sheer shoe mole uh, animal. And that was pretty creepy, but June was doing this, you know, like pretty much being all, all up on Iroh. So it's kind of like they switched some of that stuff just to appease, I guess, some things. It's not a bad thing, but it's just like interesting that they did it. They also changed the gender of the lovers in Omashu. And so now we're going to get back to just how the story is switched around. So after the Kiyoshi Warriors, we get to Omashu. And, you know, this is where we meet Bumi. Now, this part I really didn't like because, first of all, they cram three stories in together it's the story of omashu it's the story of jet it's the story of the cave in the lovers and there's also just like some time of Bumi, which you know is omashu but yeah it was just showing like all these different stories back to back to back and it felt like we never got to like because we meet jet when we first come to omashu and then we meet the mechanist oh yeah we meet the mechanist and his son too and we realize that the mechanist is a traitor and then jet is a, a freedom fighter and a terrorist and he's trying to get all the uh, people who are telling secrets and the whistleblowers and people who are working with the fire nation he's willing to do whatever it takes to eradicate them from the city boomy let's talk about boomy boomy in this show seems like a whiny like 
oh ang you hurt me you left me boomy in the show in the anime series was supposed to be there to show ang different ways to think about the world he gave ang a challenge and he, he wanted ang to think about it in an out of the box way that's what boomy's whole story is is thinking out of the box is not thinking within these confines this is how ang finds tough because boomy tells ang that he needs to find somebody who wait and listens and this is why the story with the cave of two lovers i feel like it was just a little bit too soon like i love the song i love that they included it in this series and that they added like the cave of two lovers but at the same time it was kind of weird that it was Sokka and Katara. It, they're not lovers, they're brother and sister. And they never even established Aang and Katara liking each other at all. Like, I know that they're children and maybe you don't want to do it so fast. But I mean, come on, like, you gotta show at least something Aang, like, you know, liking her at least. Even if they don't want to add that, why'd you have to make Sokka and uh, Katara go? And why'd you do it so early? Could have just waited till season two? The secret tunnel. And I just feel like the badger moles were like, uh, you know, they were a foreshadowing of Toph in the season two this is how we knew that Toph could sense the world just like the badger moles could so it was just kind of weird to see them chop it all up we met jet then we found out uh the mechanism is a traitor then we found out that jet was a freedom fighter and then we found out that boomy you know what i'm saying it's just like we never got to like sit with one story and like absorb it in either i also didn't like that when boomy boomy was trying to spit some um knowledge to ang but like even though he was like whining about it like oh and you left me uh you left me for 100 years and you ran away he was spitting some facts he was like look it i'm a king i know what it's like to have to make hard decisions like do i feed the people or do i feed the soldiers you know and ang is gonna have to make those hard decisions but then at the end ang was like but you were wrong you do need friends because Boomy was saying that like you need to give up on friends and need to be doing this stuff alone and that's what a lot of the avatars were saying too which i didn't really like they were pretty much telling ang that he needs to like, give up on his friends and <laughs> be by himself basically saying what the guru was saying and the avatar that last airbender series when he had to open up his chakras but it was just like a lot of them were kind of just bitter and just like you need to be alone and not have friends because friends are a liability and that was a lot of the avatar and even boomy sentiments but i can see why they say that but it just kind of put a bad taste in listening to all these people who are adults um trying to talk to ang and ang's all like you're wrong and i'm like okay so the kid's gonna be right the whole time and we're supposed to be listening to i mean ang is a mature 12 year old but it's like he's still 12 years old so it would have been nice to have him have some like guidance and have the avatar roku figure come in it was just a bunch of times when avatar would come in and just like tell Aang something and just like force their opinion on him without like actually giving him some type of guidance. So another thing, they didn't really talk about, they showed the comet in the beginning with the airbenders because they were like, you know, with the power of the comet, we're able to fight you. But they really don't talk about the comet after that at all. Like, I know that they were really, they really weren't going to focus on it on this series as much because they're is a different timeline because the kids have to grow up in real, the real life you know if they go through puberty they're gonna grow up i understand that part but to not even bring it up again because ang has to learn all his bendings as fast as possible so he could fight the fire lord and save the world they kept on talking about saving the world but they never shown ang they showed ang taking it seriously and feeling bad but like what he was doing like a lot of the time he wasn't training he wasn't training with water bending at all ang did not water bend once like when uh, Katara got the scroll in the show, that's when Aang was training with her. And that would have made sense to how Katara is so powerful and as strong as she is, because it's kind of just like, dang, how she gets so good. Like she wasn't even training with somebody. It would have made sense that Aang and her were kind of like getting better. But Katara is better than Aang, but Aang was getting better too. And by the time they, they got to the uh, Northern Water Tribe, even they were just like, so you didn't practice? You should have been practicing as you were traveling yeah and you should have been after all the boomy stuff and everything we end up getting to the spirit world where ang he sees a forest he sees it burnt down and this is where he him and katara and sokka get caught into the spirit world this is a change because back in the old series it was just katara or it was just ang and sokka sokka was actually the one who got caught in the spirit world ang had to go into the spirit world to go save him and it was just kind of interesting. I didn't mind that one so much because it was cool because we got to see Katara's point of view as she's going back to her memory of seeing her mom being killed. So that was 
that was pretty cool because it was kind of like trippy and then you seen ko ko was scary i do feel like ko was pretty good that was that's pretty good i didn't like the part with sokka and his father so there was a time in the series where sokka was going through his voyage to become a warrior and he had to do this trial to like go through these ice blocks on a, like a, a boat and he had to like dodge them and in this series Sokka passes, they give him a little marking on his forehead and his little dot, and they say that you are a warrior. And then Sokka walks out, and then his father and another man in the tribe, Basso, they're talking, and his father, Hakoda, was like, yeah, I just don't think that Sokka's gonna be, you know, capable to be a warrior. And that was Sokka's, like, fear, that he's not gonna live up to his father's potential. And I was just like, Man, that's sad. It made me not like Sokka's dad. It made me not like a lot of the adults like <laughs> in the show, except Iroh still. I like Iroh still, but it just made me to be like, I can't rock with him. Like, I can't like hold him to the degree that Sokka wants me to anymore. Like in the show, yeah. Hakoda was like, Sokka, you are a warrior and you are a good leader. You know, nobody's good at public speaking, but you are, you know, that wasn't your time to uh, show me who you are this is the time like Sokka actually going out to battle Sokka's a brave person Sokka protects his village Sokka protects his sister he protected Aang you know he'll do the right thing and for Hakoda to say that it just like put a bad taste in my mouth it's like dang I can't even really like the dad like that one episode that I really do like was the episode the mask uh masks so the episode with blue the blue spirit and Aang so when they break out of the prison that part was cool because it was pretty much just like the series them breaking out them on a little ladder things and they're like uh stacking them over and to get over to the other side of the wall all of that was really cool the bending was cool the sword play was like i thought that choreography was pretty nice admiral zhao i don't mind his character change so much but it's like he's not as intimidating and that's kind of bad in some points because it's just kind of hilarious but he was just like we are the sons and daughters of fire <laughs> and his delivery with that just always has me weak like we are the sons and daughters of fire <laughs> i'm just like i really can't take this guy seriously even with his mutton chops but you know it's funny that's what i'm saying it's like overall it's pretty good but like just here and there it just hits and misses like it's not as bad as the m night Shyamalan. like m night Shyamalan one is below the bars like down here this one is like here but you know the series is like it exceeds expectations so it's like this is just like hits expectations but it's just like mm. it's like the stuff that they changed and that was good it's like okay that was good but it's like you didn't really need to change it but like stuff that like they changed and it was like some of it's just like meh like it's not that bad that it ruins it but it's just like eh, why'd you change it and then there's stuff that some stuff that is bad that it's like it's not that bad that it's like makes it terrible but it's still like eh, that's not that good either so another aspect that they changed and that I didn't like so much is that Katara's necklace. By the time that they get to the Northern Water Tribe, the sexism there is still there. Like Paku, he's like, nah, y'all can't fight. Women don't fight. It's only the men that fight, which is part of their culture. But, you know, Katara wants to fight. And she's like, I'm, I'm good at fighting. I don't want to just heal. I'm good at fighting. So him, her and Paku fight. And he's like, yeah, you're a good waterbender. He's like, but you won't let me fight? She's like, no. And then he's like, no. But... There's never anything with the necklace with the grandma. Like, Paku was supposed to propose to Katara's grandmother, but this just never comes around. You know, even I think they used the necklace to find Aang with the, the sheer shoe with the Jade's mole. Um, <laughs> not her actual mole, but her mole creature. And it was just kind of disappointing to see that that necklace didn't have as much importance in this series as it did in the old series because that's another point of Sakatara's connection with her mother now the end of the series i thought it was pretty cool actually to go to the northern water tribe i thought ua was fine you know her being a dream inside Sokka's spirit world vision that was fine you know the way she sacrificed herself i think the the, the scene with momo was kind of cheesy like when momo got hurt they're like oh we need to heal momo i was like really and that's that's the moment that you realize that Sokka really cared about momo <laughs> it was just like okay bro there are there are bigger things at stake right here i don't i mean momo's i love momo but like come on y'all that was that was kind of cheesy the fact that ang didn't train he that was his first time water bending when he went with the ocean spirit and he like went avatar state and then he went full kaiju mode like ang was murking people i don't mind that but ang was like <laughs> flying people off the ship you know devastating ships i mean he was doing the same thing in the show but here it's just so much more like 
visceral like dang and then we even see people die from the water tribe people were calling katara master and then they passed away which i thought was actually pretty cool like you're bringing it more grounded you're making it more realistic that part is actually pretty cool so it's like overall like i want them to do a season two and season three i really don't hope they don't merge your stuff like it'll make me sad if they do but i'm not one of them people who'd be like oh it should not be made into a live action they shouldn't do any more remakes like bro if it's a popular story eventually they're gonna make a movie about it like they wrote the bible even if you think it's real or you know you just like it for your religious beliefs or whatever your stance is on it prince of egypt is a amazing movie i'm glad that they made the prince of egypt and that's animated right i'm not saying that they should make the prince of egypt in uh, live action but who knows a prince of egypt broadway play might be might be amazing so the fact that they make stuff into different mediums is not a bad thing like lion king is on broadway i love lion king on broadway my family brought me to that so i'm not saying that you should never make stuff into live action or like you should never make an adaptation into another adaptation because who are you to say that it could be awesome it could be amazing it just takes the right director it takes the right vision it takes the right budget it takes a lot of different things but it really takes somebody who has the soul and who understands what the people want and what even if they're like, well, not what the people want. <laughs> Maybe not even what the people want, but they want to tell a great story. And, you know, they have at their heart just telling a great story. This didn't feel like they were trying to tell a great story. This felt like they were trying to retell a great story. And some of the stuff, it was kind of like even like it was self-aware, like, hey, we did this in the show. Hey, haha, we're making fun of the show. It's like they're self-aware that they're a show that's based on another show it's like a rick and morty uh other universe episode or something like that so that's kind of what i treat this series as as if it's in another universe i don't hate it but at the same time i don't love it it is interesting to see and it's kind of cool to watch with people who never seen the series like like in detail like that you know my mom she watched me watch the show when i was a kid but she actually watched this uh, series from you know episode one to episode eight and i think that's a cool thing that other people get to experience it in a different way because not everybody likes to watch something in the same way and i don't think all remakes are bad either because scott pilgrim takes off i've watched the movie i played the game i haven't read the manga all the way through but that was a cool retelling because it got to show you um just a different perspective of how the story would go it helps you understand like if you are a fan and you've seen the other uh ways that the story's been told then you see the little uh easter eggs and hints that they are doing and scott pilgrim takes off so i'm just saying i think it's cool that they did this i hope that they try to stay a little bit closer to the original story and not trail so far off and like you know not be i don't know i guess cheesy if with some of the dialogue and try to just keep things in a good pace like don't change too many things around because things are already pretty all right in the original story i probably have a lot more things to talk about i'll probably make more videos on this series but that's all i gotta say right now i'm gonna be posting my reaction videos my live reactions because i recorded myself while i was reacting to the episode so i'm gonna make a compilation of those so they'll probably be here or here click somewhere over here but yeah you guys i hope that you have a good rest of your day and i'll talk to you guys next time this is sun yonatan signing out Peace.